that involves the students and the students have to start using the grammar to tell the story. It's really, really fun. Uh, number three is um, present practice produced. So you might present with the guided discovery or with the situational presentation, but this is another framework um, which um, organizes the lesson to give a lot of structure, a lot of control for the teacher at the beginning, and ends with a lot of freedom, a lot of creativity for the students. Test, teach, test um, is a, um, means that students try a task, they see, the teacher can see what the students don't know, and then the, um, fix those knowledge gaps specifically, and then they try a similar task again. The flipped classroom, we do have a webinar on that at Twinkle, um, which is um, students learn the new grammar at home and they only use the classroom for practicing and sharing what they've learned. And then finally, we have role play. Now, like I said, this list isn't all of the ways to teach grammar. It's just some of them, uh, some of the uh, most well-known ones maybe. Um, and I would really like to know if you want a webinar on any of these other styles of teaching grammar, let me know because I'm happy to make one for you. Um, but having said that, in these different um, structures, you can find a lot of the same techniques. So in all of these, you will find a focus on context. So that's not looking at 100 random sentences, that's looking at using, uh, seeing the grammar and producing the grammar within a particular, you know, maybe a story or a situation or um, a particular communicative goal. Um, number two, this thing you will see is scaffolding. That means structuring the lesson so the teacher has a lot of control at the beginning and uh, there's a lot of freedom, a lot of creativity for students at the end. In a lot of these, you will see concept checking questions or eliciting information. So that's not just telling our students what the answer is but trying to get the answers from our students, making them into grammar they have to tell us the right answers. And you'll also see in every grammar lesson, meaning and pronunciation cover. So in every grammar lesson we do, we want to check, did we, do our students understand how to make the grammar, that's the form, the meaning of the grammar, when to use it, and the pronunciation of this form, including any contractions that we might have. And you might also see in these different methods some traditional elements. You know, you might see your timeline, you might see your grammar table that you're very familiar with. So there's a lot of different ways to teach in grammar, and like I said, you can let me know um, if you want more help um, teaching with one of these other styles because today we are just talking about role play. So with all of these different styles for teaching grammar, why would you teach using role play? That's my question. Um, feel free to type your own answers in the chat box as well. Why would you teach grammar through role play? Well, my answers are number one, it builds confidence in the students. We want our students not just to use English in the classroom, but in the real world as well. And by making a simulation of the real world in our classroom, we're helping them to practice that confidence so that they can use English in a real situation. It can be really motivating for your students because they can see that the grammar isn't just to pass their exam. Uh, they can use this grammar in a real life situation. It can also help students understand how cultural norms uh, might be different in another culture. So if they're practicing a role play in, you know, that's in the USA or in the UK, they might notice some differences in the situation uh, from how it might be in Vietnam. So you can talk to them about that so that when they uh, do meet people from other countries, if they travel abroad, they know a little bit about what to expect, about what might be different. Um, yeah, which I think is always super interesting for students. 
And finally, we're helping to build functional language. So that's not random phrases that students will never use again, but these are phrases that students can take um, and keep in their minds for social situations for the future. Uh, so it's beyond abstract grammar. This is phrases that they can use in everyday life. So I'm a big fan of role play uh, because I'm a big fan of having fun in the classroom. I think fun is so important. And it's not just for kids. Teenagers love doing role plays and adults love doing role plays too. So if you teach teenagers, adults, this is 100% for you. So we want to do a role play in the class. What kind of role plays are there? Now, my theory, <laughs> my personal theory, is that there are two types of role play. The first one is transactional language. So that's when you, your student is in a situation where they have a very specific goal of what they want from that conversation. And it may or may not involve money, but it that's when it's, they're not trying to build a social situation, but they're trying to get something from that other person. Um, and it's a very defined goal, very specific. So maybe the goal is to send a parcel at the post office. Uh, maybe the goal is to book a flight. So they have a particular outcome that they want to achieve, and they know that by the end of that conversation, they will achieve that outcome. Now, the second type of role play is a social situation. Now, that is not so um, defined. It's a lot more ambiguous. For example, maybe there's an argument between a teenager and a parent. Now, the teenager and the parent will have different points of view, but the end result of the conversation might be something different to what they expect. So the important thing here isn't exchanging information or getting something, it's to evolve the relationship. So other examples of that could be meeting an alien, that is a social situation, uh, planning a party, having a debate where your students are playing different characters. So when you think about role play, I'd really like you to think about different kinds of role play, not just that transactional um, interaction, but also social situations. And if you're teaching teenagers and adults, I've, had, I've seen that teenagers and adults love pretending to have an argument <laughs> with, um, with a parent. They really enjoy having that, um, that dynamic. So I would highly recommend that one. So you've chosen a role play that you want to do and you've matched a grammar point and a real life situation. How can you organize your role play to make sure that your students get a lot from that role play. So I'm going to talk you through a role play that I made. This role play is ready to go in your classroom. And I'm going to talk to you about the structure of this um, PowerPoint, how I made it so that you can make your own similar resources and you can use the ones on Twinkle in the best way possible. So this uh, role play, for example, is for, you know, I'd say it's for teenagers and adults, probably. Um, A1, A2 level, you could do it online or in person. But the structure is what we're focusing on today. And the structure um, can be used whatever level or age group you're using. So we're just going to look at how to make these role plays, not specifically about using this one role play. So. How do we organize our role play? Well, I think there's seven steps that we go through in our lesson. The first step is classic ESL. We're going to do our lead in where we build the context and we help students remember um, what vocabulary they have in this area. So for example, I've just got uh, four simple questions about restaurants um, in this situation. 
So we have um, some questions and students might say, might ask you for some connected vocabulary, uh, for example, menu or waiter. And you're going to tell students that the aim of the lesson is to go to a restaurant and have a meal in a restaurant. Now, you know that the real aim of the lesson is to teach this new grammar of would like, right? But your students don't know that you are secretly giving them a grammar lesson. <laughs> your students just fun lesson where we get to pretend like we're going to a restaurant. Okay, so in their minds, they're going to a restaurant, but you know that they are only going to the restaurant to learn this new grammar would like. Because, you know, that's grammar that we often use in a restaurant situation. So, after we, we are going to add in any vocabulary that they need to complete the role play. So, you know, this example is full of very British food. <laughs> um, I would suggest in your situation, make something that is more So. Maybe if your students don't go on holiday to the UK very often, maybe they go to, I don't know, Australia or South Africa or the USA. Maybe they're more interested in those countries. I would change the food to make it relevant to them. Maybe um, your students don't travel abroad, but they sometimes meet um, English speaking tourists traveling in Vietnam. And they actually need to know the vocabulary in English for Vietnamese food. In that case, teach them that vocabulary, whatever they are going to use in their everyday lives. And um, this slide is organized as a matching activity. But if I were you, you could, I would make it into a game after your students have practiced um, matching these um, pictures to the words. You could take away the answers and then have your students run to the correct answer. If you say, for example, where is the steak? Your students could run and try to be the first person to touch the steak. Um, I would also ask some um, concept checking questions to make really sure that they understand these words. So, for example, we have the word quiche down here. Um, and if you say to your students, what is in a quiche? And they say it's banana. Then you know that they have not understood <laughs> what a quiche is, for example. So, yeah, the second step is teaching that vocabulary. Step number three could be done here or it could be done towards the end of the lesson. But here we're focusing in on the grammar. Now, what I said at the beginning is that in every grammar lesson, we cover the form, the meaning and the pronunciation. Now, at this point, we're not really focusing on the form, how to make this grammar. We're more focusing on the meaning. And that's because it's very typical for students to confuse would like and like, right? And they don't always remember that they need to use would like and not want to make a request. So in this slide, what we're doing is we're asking students to tell us what is the meaning of the grammar. So we're looking at the meaning and looking at the pronunciation as well. We have some examples that you can practice or drill with your students of um, affirmative question form, a short answer as well. So we have a lot of examples of this grammar, but we're not doing too much grammar analysis right now. We're always just keeping it in the context of grammar. So that's step three. Step four is to practice example conversation. So here we have a very short conversation that is full of the grammar that we want them to learn today. Again, know that we are that the conversation is full of one particular grammar form. They think that they are just practicing going to a restaurant. <laughs> 
But um, we have examples of the contraction here, I'd like. We have an example of question form as well. Uh, we have an example of an, a polite answer. So we have a conversation full of the grammar we want to practice today. Now, on this section of your role play, I would practice the conversation um, where you say the sentence and the students repeat that sentence after you. So, you know, as a teacher, you would say, good afternoon, welcome to the Twinkle Star Restaurant. And your students would repeat that. Now, that is a very long sentence. And you might say that sentence and your students try and say it and they feel really lost, really confused. If they feel lost and confused, break the sentence into smaller uh, chunks. So maybe you just say, good afternoon. And then they practice that one phrase before the complete phrase. You can also practice the phrase in reverse. So let's look, let's look at the third sentence, which says, certainly write this way. That's a really difficult sentence for a beginner level English learner. So you could start by just saying way. And then the students repeat, and you say this way. And then they repeat this way, and then write this way, and then write this way, so that you're drilling the sentence, building not from the beginning, but the end of the sentence. And the students find that really, really useful for building their confidence and building their fluency in that pronunciation. So after you practice as a class, students then practice the conversation with their partner and they want to practice both sides of being the waiter and being the customer. So at this point, you're wow, we know this conversation perfectly. So you are going to give them a surprise. <laughs> you are going to give them the same conversation but some of the words are now missing. <laughs> so this tests them on how good their knowledge of these phrases are. You can notice that a lot of these phrases are missing words that are part of the grammar that we want them to learn today. For example, here, what would you they have to remember that the question is with would and not do for example um i love disappearing conversations if you are making your own role play and you're writing the conversation on the white you can delete even more words in deleting the conversation until there is just the first word of the whole sentence so, so, for example, here, you might have your students practice this conversation until they only see the word hi, and they have to remember that that complete sentence is, I'd like a table for four, please. So, so disappearing conversations are a great element to include in your role play because they help your students build that working memory of the target grammar. And you can also use them as a great revision activity at the beginning of the next class as well. So when your students are, uh, this is a great lead-in to your next class so that students can review them and they see a lot of simple sentences with the grammar in a particular context. So at this point, you have phrases like, they know those phrases really, really, really well. So this is the point where they can have a lot of fun with inventing their own role play. So you're going to help them make their own conversation. And again, your goal is to make this as fun as possible. Um, in this um, example, I made a, a wheel where you can press 
and, and the, the wheel spins and decides what they are going to eat in the restaurant. But you can also help them, for example, if it's a restaurant, they can design their own menus. Um, they can put all of their favorite foods on the menu. Um, so then you're going to make it as realistic as possible as well. Um, so you can have your students who are the customers wait outside the classroom you can have the waiters organize the club to a restaurant uh, you can have some maybe some piano music in the background um, or you can have a projection of a restaurant and your students are going to come in and practice this conversation but they know they need to use the phrases of would like because we have done all of this preparation before with would like. So your students are role playing, the, the teacher, you as the teacher, what are you doing? Well, you are probably trying to be as quiet as you can. So when your students are completing this role play, Unless they are really, really having a big problem, don't interrupt and involve yourself in their conversation. Just listen and see what kinds of mistakes they are making. And if you can, write down the type of mistake on a piece of paper. So you have a record of mistakes that you are hearing from different students around the room. Okay, but, but we, we are, are not stopping them, them and correcting them, them on their grammar. grammar. We're, We're just listening as much as we can, unless they have, have a big problem. problem. <laughs> so, how do we correct mistakes that, that our students, students are making? making? I personally like to use Gary the Goat. Uh, uh, Gary is, is a great student, but he makes a lot, lot of mistakes. Um, he's, he's a very, very nice goat. goat. Um, but <laughs> the students, my students love correcting um, Gary the Goat because they don't feel like the mistakes are personal to them. They can enjoy correcting uh, Gary's mistakes. So I write on the whiteboard um, incorrect sentences that Gary said. Students have to work in, uh, with their partner to correct the, the, the mistake that Gary made. And then as a class, you, or you can even choose a student to lead the corrections. You can write the correct sentences. And if you're doing a role play lesson like this is, this is the point where I would really, really focus on the grammar. Because your students have been practicing the pronunciation of this grammar all lesson. They've been practicing the meaning all lesson. So now we are going to be really, really clear on the form are actually made. And because your students have so many examples, I think they will have a pretty good idea of how going to focus on word plus like, you know, using um, uh, using anything, perhaps, if your students are ready for it, using that contraction of, of I, um, making a question form, for example, really practice and that grammar. And, and I, I would give my students this lesson. I would probably give them a worksheet homework. Very full worksheet. Um, this particular grammar in a more traditional way, you know, your traditional lesson. So that, that is your seven steps to a successful um, grammar lesson, lesson through a role play. play. You build, build the context, lead in, give them, them an objective, which, which is not to learn new grammar today, it's to go, go to a, a restaurant. And it's it's to, step, step number two, teach them the vocabulary, vocabulary that they need. They, they might, might have more vocabulary questions. questions. Number three is to um, maybe take a look at the meaning of the grammar in the context and the pronunciation of this grammar. Uh, number four is that, um, that uh, conversation that they have to practice as a class and with their partner. Number five is to make that conversation slowly disappear. 
So they, they have, have the grammar, grammar examples in their working, working memory. memory. Uh, uh, number, number six is, is your free practice, practice the, the fun, fun of, of um, the creative role play. play. And, and number seven, seven finally, is, is error correction, correction not, not with, with our students' mistakes, but with, with Gary, Gary the goat's mistakes. mistakes. And, and obviously, obviously you, you can create your, your own character, character uh, that, that will make, make a mistake. mistake. <laughs> <laughs> Lots, Lots of mistakes in, in your class. class. Um, so, so finally, finally I, have I have a few tips, tips on different, different ways to think about role uh, play. play. This, this is just what I found, found really works, works for me. me. But there are many, many, many ways, ways to use role play in your classes. Um, for, for example, example a, a completely, completely different, different way of using role play, play would, would be to have the, the beginning, beginning of the conversation on the, on the board, and, and students with their partner have to continue the conversation to make, make a mini role play, role play of maybe two, two or three minutes. minutes. Um, so, so you, you can, can be really, really, really funny, funny with these, be really creative, you know, you know go, go to an alien planet, planet um, help, help students, students go, go on a blind, blind date, date. Or make, make them, um, you know, you know guess guess about, to, uh, about, about speaking in a funny situation, you can, can use those. those. So role play doesn't, doesn't always have, have to be realistic, it can be, be really fun as well. well. And, and finally, finally my, my tips, tips are have fake money. money. If, if your, your students, students are doing, doing a role play, play like, like uh, going, going to the shop, <laughs> for example, <laughs> this is going to be really motivating for students. Um, especially if you, if you catch a student using the wrong language, language when, when you don't, don't want them to, you can, you can take, take some, some of their money, money away, away as a punishment. punishment. <laughs> their fake, fake money. <laughs> and, um, so, so using money is, is another dimension to add to your class. And, and students, students really, really, really enjoy playing, playing with fake, fake money, money as well. well. Um, consider, consider giving, giving your, your students very simple costumes. If you have, have students that are very shy, shy and they don't, don't want, want to talk, talk in English, English, it's, it's amazing, amazing the difference that a costume can give, give them. Maybe, Maybe for, for example, if they, they are the waiter, waiter they can, can have, have an apron, apron or a tea towel, towel on their, their arm, arm. And, and it really helps, helps them feel more confident, more confident because, because they, they are not, not their normal shy self. self. They, they are this new character. character. So, so that, that can be really, really fun. fun. Tip, Tip number three is, is to, like, like I said, said in, in the, the role play, play be, be quiet. quiet. As, as, be as quiet, quiet as, as you can. can. And, just and just focus, focus on listening. listening. You, can you can correct, correct your, your students at the end, end of the lesson. And, and four, finally, it is um, personalised to your, your students' interests. If, if your, your students, students love a particular boy band, band they, they can practice, practice meeting, meeting that boy band, band. Or, or if they, they love, love a TV show, show you can, can make, make a role play based on that, that TV show. show. Um, or, or if, if they, they are thinking, thinking of studying abroad at a university, university, you can role play their, their first day abroad at, at university. university. Whatever, Whatever they, they are interested in, in you can, can make, make a role play about it, it and think, think what, what grammar they, they might use um, in, in that, that situation. So, so those, those are my final tips. <laughs> tips. Thank, Thank you so much. much. I, I feel like, like that, that was a lot, lot of information, information in, in a very, very short amount, amount of time. time. But, but I, I do, do really love questions, questions so, so I would love, 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 love uh, to know, know what questions, questions you have about uh, teaching grammar through role play. Yeah, yeah thank, thank you so much, Miranda. Lots, lots of ideas, ideas and, and 